Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And yesterday, representatives of various sectors within our supply chain were giving evidence to MPs about the current Brexit mess. And in this video, I'd like to take a look at what they've said about the shortages, as well as the government's response to them. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So in a nutshell, the problem is as follows. We have shortages of essential and non-essential items in Britain that were easy to acquire before we left the single market, including during the pandemic. The government and their supporters try to claim that this is a result of global issues and is affecting everyone. Global issues, especially around the pandemic, are absolutely at play, but the actual problems are not affecting any of our European neighbours, not one. Not even Northern Ireland, which is part of the UK. The only place around this part of the world with the problems I've described, that is the shortages of essential and non-essential items for us, the consumer, is Britain. By some mad coincidence, also the only place in this part of the world without access to the single market. As Neil Carberry of the Recruitment and Employment Confederation put it, a global issue caused by a misallocation caused by the pandemic, which has been amplified by the new trading arrangements we're working under. So what has happened is that our neighbours have an issue with global pressures on the supply chain, which they are coping with. But we have succumbed to those pressures because we have isolated ourselves from our regional supply chain. And that's why we have shortages. And those shortages have not even finished getting worse yet. And when they do, we're told very clearly by all the people who predicted exactly what was going to happen now, that they're not going to start getting better for a long time either. So they'll carry on getting worse, they'll bottom out at some point, and then they're just going to stay like that. And the government have refused to act throughout. Five years ago, people who understood the supply chain understood what pressures Brexit would bring to it and what we'd be facing. Um, as the, the red lines came in during Theresa May's time, they understood more and more of what was going to happen. And, and they may not have appreciated even then just how bad it might get as a result of having a government not only insane enough to go ahead with a hard Brexit, but to not even mitigate the problems where they could. And this, as I'll point to towards the end of this video, is why the industry is much more concerned now than it was six months ago. Six months ago, they knew trouble was coming. They didn't realise it would get as bad as it got because they thought the government would actually act. And just as with COVID, Boris Johnson, when he does act, acts far too late with our critical shortages and even then doesn't act as much as he should. Like when the newspaper headlines got to him, he ordered visas for some key workers, including HGV drivers. The scheme has also been extended to other key workers as well now. In theory, this is what the industry asks for, so it should be fine now. No? No. The problem is that the way the visas have been managed can't work. Duncan Buchanan of the Road Haulage Association told MPs yesterday, people aren't sitting around waiting for visas to get stuck in the UK over Christmas. If you were designing a visa scheme, he said, if you were designing a visa scheme to fail, you would design it something like this. Now, when the government initially you turned on the visas, I pondered at the time if they had introduced the scheme in the way they did to deliberately cause it to fail so that they could turn around and say, well, they asked us for visas and we gave them visas, but they're not working, so it's back to business as to sort out the mess. I honestly don't know if that's the case because it's one of these other examples of is it incompetence or is it malice? Either is equally plausible. But it was no surprise to Hawley's that the issuing of these 5,000 HGV drivers in the way they did would only turn up about 20 drivers. The prospect of coming over here where the truck stop facilities are very poor and they're going to have to be put it up with customs checks that can take days if they're unlucky and when both the pay and conditions are better in the EU where, as the gammons keep reminding us, they've also got shortage of lorry drivers. It's just not happening. Buchanan was clear when asked by MPs if the visa system would work, he said no. The Food and Drink Federation's Ian Wright said... We do need apprenticeship skills and British solutions, but we do need to understand the numbers, and I don't think the government understands the numbers. 
Now, he's alluding here to the government's desire to skill up our own domestic workforce and deal with these problems ourselves. Like, yeah, they'll say, stop being reliant on foreign workers, get your own workers. Now, now long term, this is fine. But we have the following immediate problems. First of all, we do not have enough people with the right skills to do a lot of these jobs physically in the UK. They just don't exist. Training is needed. Sometimes that training takes years. You cannot achieve that overnight. Just telling businesses to skill up our own workforce doesn't work. You need the government to do that. The Department for Education should be identifying those skills where they are needed and in what numbers and be funding training programmes in conjunction with employers and colleges. When something needs coordinating like that on a national scale, that is what the government exists for. You can't just expect it to happen on its own. The second issue is that an inexperienced worker in any field, skilled or unskilled, is not as productive as an experienced worker. Because even when I talk about unskilled work, I don't mean that there are any skills to it, just that they are considered quick and easy to show you the basics. It's the case of you can spend a morning learning how to do the basics of the job as opposed to three years. But it still takes time to work at peak productivity. You still have to develop knacks for things. If you flood a sector with a load of inexperienced workers, it will suffer. It will suffer because those workers aren't as effective, they will make many mistakes, and it will suffer because the experienced workers will have to take time out to coach them, making them less productive. You need to manage something like this over a period of years with a carefully laid out government plan. We don't have that. A third problem would be even where the skills might exist in the country, like HGV drivers, there are HGV drivers who are not driving HGVs right now. So we do also have a problem that even where the skills do exist, the people aren't doing them because the work is crap. So the government also need to look at, just like the EU have done with lorry drivers, they've looked at the situation as, what is it that's so unappealing about this job? Right, we need to coordinate a response to that. Not just tell businesses to do something about it. We need to do something about it. The government aren't doing that either. And then the fourth problem is that there is a mismatch between where the vacancies are and where the potential workers are. Even for unskilled work, it's struggling to recruit because if you were to map out the hotspots of vacancies around Britain, and then another map of Britain where you map out the hotspots of where unemployment are, they don't match up. The reason why you have hotspots of unemployment is because it's parts of the country where there aren't that many jobs. You know, whenever I see national media wondering why, oh, why can't this X number of unemployed do these jobs? I immediately have to wonder, are they genuinely just that ignorant or is it deliberate grift? So the idea of making better use of a domestic workforce and relying less on foreign labour is absolutely fine in theory. Of course, any large economy needs foreign labour. You'll never generate all the labour you need on your own. If you don't like that idea, then you're basically supporting the idea that the UK becomes a much smaller economy. It contracts significantly. But it's fine to say, well, you know, no, no, let's make sure we have enough work for everyone in Britain and then top up with what we can't manage ourselves with foreign workers. That's grand. But the way you achieve that is with a large, competently run, well-funded Department for Education whose job includes identifying the necessary skills and making sure that we are training people for those skills. It also needs them to not just identify the skills we need right now, because again, there's a lead time to get those skills in place, to look to the future. What, are we, what skills do we want to develop for the future industries and get those in place? I cannot emphasise enough as a teacher with years of experience in colleges just how this has never been a thing since the Conservatives have been in power. I would say that Labour could have done better. I used to chunter a little bit under Labour. But there were schemes. There were schemes built up by the last Labour government and they've all been stripped away within the first few years of the Conservatives' time in power. The government cannot just wish into existence a structure that doesn't exist. Finally, another big bombshell, which isn't really a bombshell for those of us on this channel, but might be for the general public, 
Ian Wright also talked about 1977 and the supermarkets changing their prices twice daily and said inflation like this would destroy Johnson's levelling up agenda. Now, he's been quite charitable in suggesting that Johnson has a levelling up agenda, but the comment is designed to make him sit up and take notice. If you want to build back better, Wright is saying, you cannot continue like this. He said that it took 15 years to recover before. Again, probably designed to get Boris Johnson to think, well, uh, I don't think I'll still be Prime Minister in 15 years. I might need to get it a bit quicker than that. He made a comment about getting Christmas labour. Now, as a lot of people will appreciate, there's a lot of extra recruitment in the run-up to Christmas as demand increases. You know, and, and Ian Wright said, big business can afford £22 an hour, but small businesses can't. He said the results will be prices have to go up in order for these businesses to get the labour they need. If they have to pay £22 an hour to get these workers, their prices are just going to have to go up. That means inflation, which not only absorbs all the benefits of the higher wages, all right, it's talking about some workers getting more wages now, Brexit benefit. No, it's, if, if those wages are being consumed by the higher cost of energy and food and so on, they're not getting wage increases. They're just treading water a little bit better than the people who are getting nothing extra, who are just sinking under this increased cost of living. But he also said, and this was crucial, six months ago, his members thought this was like a transitory problem. It's just going to be short term. Now they all think it's going to go into 2023 and even 2024. Now, what it'll mean here is six months ago, they thought the government would do something. Yes, the government was talking to, oh, we're not going to do this, we're not going to do that. You know, industry uh, uh, reported at the time were saying, well, the government's going to have to do something because actually this isn't sustainable. And then they were amazed that the government actually didn't do anything. So six months ago, they thought the government would actually act to manage the situation. Now that they've seen that they won't, the problems are here to stay for some considerable time. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.